I'm now going to show you how to make a classic head rail split bunch. First of all, what I do is check the paperwork to determine whether it's left hand or right hand. And on this instant, it's a right hand. And it's a split bunch, obviously, so I like that. And then I check the amount of runners needed for the blind. And it's 14 runners. But because it's a split bunch, you have to do an equal amount of runners each side. So it's going to be seven on one side and seven on the other. Firstly, I'm going to attach the end set to the tilt rod. Guide it through nice and slow to make sure that the drill bit doesn't snap. And then you get your shaft in, and in that hole that I've drilled there, you insert there. Taking off all the burrs using a Stanley. Make sure that this spins tidy when it's, the end set is in. Now what I'm going to do is get the runners that are needed. And like I said earlier, it's going to be seven each side. I'm going back to the paperwork just to have a check. You make sure if it's an 89 millimeter or 127 and this blind is an 89 millimeter. So what you do, you get your right hand 89 and your left hand 89. Give them a spray with a silicone, like so. And then you count out seven each side. There's seven right hands. There's seven left hands. Using your pliers, you always have one link hanging over. You cut that as close to the end runner as possible. And the same again with this one. Now using a knife, you've got to take off the red wheels at the end, they just clip off fairly, fairly easily. Then what you do, when you get to that point, get your core drives, put them on each end. Now as this a right hand, the right hand runners are the first runners that go on the tilt rod. And then you put the left hand runners on, making sure that when they when you pull them together, the core, the core drives are going to be facing each other like so. And with the classic white head rail, there's always different types of tubing to use for split bunch, single bunch, reverse draw. And as this is being a split bunch, 89, we've got to put a 25mm tube on the end to make sure that when the blinds are hanging up in the window, that the louvers don't hit the, the end of the window sill. As you can see, the different types of tubing. And on this instance, like I said, it's going to be a 25mm tube. 
when you get to this stage where you've got an equal amount of runners each side on your tube, then you're ready to put the, the runners into the head rail. Like so. You feed it into the head rail. If I show you. Making sure that none of the links get caught on the bottom. Like so. Now they're in the head rail, you t take your end set, take it to the end, and then that clips in the end of the head rail. Now what I do, I always drag the last two runners back from each bunch, like so, and then open them out to the middle of the head rail. That's the one side done. Get your end set. This is a right hand end set. When you make blinds, you've got a left hand and a right hand. And because we've determined that this, this particular blind is a right hand, you've got to put a right hand end set on this side. And again, you drag you hold the two runners back and pull the rest of the runners into the middle of the blind. And as you can see, I've got a gap in between the two sets of runners if there wasn't a gap there for instance if it was like that after i dragged the two runners back that would mean that there was one too many runners in each side and i would have to take one out but in this instance after i've dragged them back there's a gap which means that the runners stated on the paperwork is the right amount of runners needed for the blind now you get your starlock tool using a Starlock washer. You get your pliers, pinch the end of the tilt rod, like so. I always turn it and hold it against my stomach and secure it on. Making sure, just to have a little check with the end cap, that there's no play on it, so that means that it's secured exactly how you want it. Lastly, now with the blind, you get your C-clips. And because there's a split bunch, we're gonna to need to put two in. And what you do, you fasten the C-clip just before the end runner. This will secure the end runner, making sure that the blind, uh, the runners run up and down the head rail and are secured in the place they need to be. Again, the same for this side. If I just show you. You keep the end runner back and you secure the C-clip like so. And you can check in that that doesn't move anyway and then you're able to see that they can move up and down with the end runners being secure there. That was the first stage of manufacturing a split bunch. Now I'm gonna show you the last stage, which is stringing the head rail. Now I'm gonna show you how to string the classic head rail split bunch. As earlier, you look at the paperwork to determine what you need to know on the blinds. And with this, what I'm concerned with on the string end is the drop. And on this instance, the drop is one meter. And also there's a special instruction on it saying metal operating chain. So what I do is highlight that, just, just to check so it eliminates mistakes. And there's a meter drop. And I've got a meter chain here. But just to make sure, I always measure it because not, none of the chains are always the same size. And this chain is 990. 
And when you and when you string a head rail, if it's tension system, which this one is, you've got to make sure that you do the cord 20 mil longer than the chain. So this is 990, the chain is 990. I'm now going to do the cord at 1 meter 10. First of all, you burn the end of the cord. Go to the end of the head rail. Measure all the way up the head rail. Pinch the end when you've measured it all the way up the head rail. Take this then to the desired drop. And we've worked that out at this 1010. As you can see on the measuring tape, 1010. And then you hold it there with your finger and run the cord all the way down the length of the tape until it gets to zero if you want to run it down here when it gets to zero pinch the cord and then you've got to double it over When you've doubled it over, using the scissors, you cut it and then burn the other end. When the ends are burned, it makes it easier to, to move the cord in and out of the head rail. Firstly, you run the cord. If you can see, there's two there's two holes there on the end set. You always run the cord, the first one, through the inside hole, through the runners, and out through the cord drive. And then give yourself enough slack, and then hook it through with the screwdriver. And then you twist the cord, if you imagine the letter C, you do it, instead of doing it like that, first of all, like that C, you do like a backward C. And then take, take out the slack and leave that in it, that's fine for now. Then using the other part of the cord, you're gonna run it through the outside hole, through the same set of runners, out through the cord drive then you're going to continue with the cord and then you get to the second part of the runners and using your cord you don't go through the runners you dog leg it through the inside as you can see give yourself plenty of slack and then again, you come through the inside hole. And then using your cord, you run the cord back through the outside hole, through the runners. And then you come to the end of the cord drive. And then Using your cord, you take it all the way back down the head rail to the first bunch of runners. And as I said earlier, you do a backward C. This time, you do it like the letter C on the alphabet with a cord, as you can see. Put your finger in it, using the outside part of the cord, take the slack out of it. Then, you get your clamp and as you can see there's a circle on there which means that you put the circle on the last runner and then fasten the clamp in position using the screws in you secure the clamp making sure that 
We don't press down too hard because it's easy to snap the end of the core drive. And because it's a split bunch, you've got to hold on the second set of runners, you've got to hold your finger on the last runner and take the slack with a cord and move the first runners up and then move it back. This will make sure that there's no gaps in the runners when the blinds open. Again, you put the, the core drive clamp on the first runner and secure it with a screw. As you can see, there's a gap here for the end cap, so you get your end cap cover, clip it on. Now, with our chain, we've got to align the runners to make sure that all the runners are facing in the same direction. That makes it easier for when they put the louvers on. Always give it a spray. As we determined earlier, that this is a right hand head rail. So you've got to put the right hand end sets on. First of all, get your wheel at the bottom of the chain. You put your wheel like so. Then with the end cap covers, as you can see the whole got to go in the little plastic feet on the end as you can hear the clip in you know that's secure in there then you get your screw screw in that hole at the end check to make sure that that's fast and tidy. And as you can see, that's not going anywhere. You know that that's on right. Now I'm gonna align the runners. As you can see the runners turning. You hear that click. You go back the other way. Do that click again and then turn them till they're straight. As you can see, all these runners, they're all facing the same way. And again, if you come up here with a second bunch of runners, again, they're all facing the same way. Now as the blind tension system, we have to use a P-clip. Using your safety warning tag, get the end of it through the top hole, and then open up the safety tag, hold it there with your fingers, put a triangle through there, and you know that fastened on in. Firstly, you get your cord at the end where the loop is. Loop the cord over the P-clip and then pull till you're a click. And again, with the chain, you do the same. You loop it over the P-clip, pull until you hear that click. And then you know it's fast and tidy.
You grab your second warning tag. Using your stapler. Now you wrap the cord and chain up like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a classic split bunch headrail.